Welcome into K-State Online. Mason Voth, Derek Young here with you. And uh, it's time to, to continue the football train on its roll because there are a lot of changes to K-State football this year because you lost Colin Klein. So you now have two new offensive per pieces of personnel in different roles. Connor Riley is going to be the offensive coordinator. You also bring in Matt Wells as your quarterback's coach and a co-OC. And it's not just on the field where – there is going to be some impact there. Obviously, K-State has dealt with plenty of position coaches moving around, uh, namely wide receiver since Chris Kleiman got here, where it never seems like there's consistency there, so they're always bringing somebody else in and, and having to you know, change up how the recruiting is going. seems to be working right now with Matthew Middleton and, and how things are going. But speaking of the quarterbacks and how Matt Wells impacts that, what is the look moving forward in the recruiting space with Connor Riley and Matt Wells heading up the offense? Yeah, well, Connor Riley will, you know, everyone gets a part of Kansas. That's, that's how Kansas State's already delved, always delved out the recruiting. Everyone gets a part in Kansas. Everyone gets a place in the Midwest, stuff like that. I think Matt Wells will get a part of Texas, but primarily he's going to work in his former home state of Oklahoma. Now, I say former. I guess he lived there last year too, and he was in Norman too. Maybe he lived in Oklahoma City. I don't know what he did, but for the most part of his childhood, I think he was born in South Carolina, but he grew up in Salisaw, Oklahoma. So his roots, his connections, recruiting wise, and especially I think he coached at Tulsa for four or five years on that on that staff early on in his coaching career. So he, he's really made his bread and butter on the recruiting trail in the state of Oklahoma. So now you got two guys that can really get after it in that state, which I think K State kind of let fall by the wayside a little bit or slipped off when Chris Kleiman was initially hired. But now you have Matt Wells and Brian LePac in the state of Oklahoma. And that can be kind of a force, two-pronged effort there. I think both of those really know what they're doing in that state. So Connor Riley, still St. Louis, you know, still other places in the Midwest, kind of his thing. He's not going to branch out too much. Uh, maybe has more of a recruiting responsibility now that he is the offensive coordinator where he maybe he's going to sign off a little bit more here and there, uh, maybe play more of a role at quarterback that be, that tends to be a, a pretty significant part of obviously your offensive recruiting strategy. But the, the coach you're losing is Colin Klein. And aside from being a part of what he's doing in Kansas City, which was with Connor Riley, he was the main guy in Colorado. So how, how do you how do you tackle Colorado moving forward? They're just going to push Steve Standard out that way, and he recruited that state when you know he had been in Wyoming for for a few years. So someone that really understands the landscape there. I'll be honest, Steve Standard probably not as great of like a recruiter recruiter, like convincing someone to come to Kansas State as well as Colin Klein was obviously. But when knowing where to look, um, who to identify. Having the trust of those high school coaches in Colorado maybe a hair better. Yeah, I think that would. I think that makes sense. I think it aligns. Uh, and I, you know, I think obviously, like there's an element that comes with 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 Colin Klein that was also beneficial in recruiting. Where, look, he he's a younger guy too, and like this is not meant to be, you know, something towards you know people over the age of uh, of forty. But <laughs> Colin Klein is a guy that he can relate slightly better. I, I'm not saying Colin Klein's the most relatable guy to 18 year old kids now, but also like you, now you are starting to get out of it where I would imagine kids that you're recruiting right now, they might know who Colin Klein was, but in the, the recent years, like this is a guy that was a Heisman trophy finalist that was coming to talk to you. Like he has the cachet in college football, Steve standard, fine coach in college football. You don't know Steve standard as a player and that, that helps at times. So I get what you're saying where, Steve Sanford has been doing this for a long enough period. He knows the tricks of the trade and might have some of the edges and spots that Colin Klein didn't. And so I think there's there's a delicate balance there when you're when you're losing Colin Klein and trying to you know get things you know kind of continuing on. Yeah, you, you probably lose some recruiting energy and, and effort when you go from Klein to Standard in that state. I'll be honest, but I don't know if you lose any charisma. I think both are probably along the same lines there. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, you know, just general thoughts on where K-State goes in quarterback in 2025, because obviously the last two years you've had really dynamic type players you land there. Obviously, everybody knows about Avery Johnson in 2023. 
But, you know, even in 2024's class, Blake Barnett comes through and, and like, there's a lot of buzz there. Uh, he's a four-star on some services, and he's got tons of athleticism and there's speed there. Where does K-State go quarterback-wise in 2025, especially since, you know, one of the early targets that was out there, a guy like Alex Mansky that Colin Klein was high on, he committed to Iowa State uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, picked Iowa State over Nebraska, over K-State, you know, Kansas State probably loses traction there once Colin Klein goes to Texas A&M. I think the first offer was actually to the son of John Kidna and Jameson Kidna, mm -hmm. who at one point committed to Houston, I want to say, and then has already backed out because of the coaching change there. I think that's how that happened. Does Kansas State get back into that? <laughs> no, I don't I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're at least, you know, neck deep in it. Uh, the other one that – I'm trying to remember if they was off. I think it was offered after Wells was hired. So this is probably a tangible candidate to be in the class. Now you got some competition with the likes of Missouri, Nebraska. Um, I think he's visited Duke and, and that's Dylan uh, Duff, the quarterback at the Smet high in St. Louis. Now Kansas state has recruited the Smet every year since climate's been there. Brian Anderson goes there a lot. Connor Riley goes there a lot. Obviously, Matt Wells has kind of made his pick here with Dylan Duff, and he's already been to campus too. So they'll keep looking, and I wouldn't be shocked to see other offers eventually, right, especially with the spring evaluation period that begins on April 15th when you can go out and watch guys work out a little bit more again. But right now, you know, it seems like 1A, 1B, 1C is Dylan Duff. Timeline-wise, is K-State – because every every class you you want to have a quarterback in, and you want to obviously find the right one. And this is not to you know try and put you know the cart before the horse, but like you you do like it does start to become important because like the chances are the guys you're recruiting in 25 and 26 are going to be in a position uh, to you know you never know with portal and everything else how how depth works behind Avery Johnson like these become important because these could be the guys that are trying to carry on after Avery Johnson moves on. So timeline wise is K state on track ahead of schedule or behind in finding their quarterback for the class of 25 on track, uh, probably need to broaden the target list a little bit in case it doesn't work out with Duff. And you got to really be able to calibrate where you are in that recruitment and how much energy it's worth putting forward. Now, if you're, in the conversation, you go forward, you know, 100 mile an hour with Dylan Duff and, and try to beat out Missouri for him, try to beat out Nebraska for him. It'll be a very contentious battle on the recruiting stage. I, I would consider him on track. But what I will say is two things. One is Matt Wells has had a lot of energy ever since he took the, the job at Kansas State on the recruiting trail. Like, not he's, he's working ahead even further than what we typically saw from Colin Klein. I mean, he's already offered – I believe quarterbacks in both the 2026 and 2027 classes. So he works ahead a little bit faster than Colin Klein. Um, a lot of energy about him. He's the one on Twitter snapping the photo of all the coaches in the private jet heading to see Lincoln Cure at Goodland High School as well. He has probably a little bit more charisma and juice and energy to him on the recruiting trail than what I was anticipating. Um, and I think that's a good thing because I think you need to have a couple of coaches like that. I think Brian LePac is like that. I think Matthew Middleton is like that. I think the more and more coaches you have like that are good, especially in offense or especially when you're recruiting skill position players, not linemen, you know, maybe a little bit more different, obviously, because you're talking about a different kind of person. So I, I'm very impressed with Matt Wells, the way he's worked ahead and how much juice and energy he's had. The second thing, because I said two things, you kind of touched around it, and I will just deliver the message home. Quarterback is one of the most important positions to recruit in this recruiting class, in my opinion. Now, I believe that Jacob Knuth is probably on scholarship at this point, but obviously he wasn't last year, so let's pretend like he's not. The only two quarterbacks on scholarship then are Avery Johnson and a kid that got here in January and Blake Barnett. Like th This quarterback room needs depth. This is a very important class to knock out of the park when it comes to quarterback. Now, if you don't knock it out of the park, you need at least to get a solid contributor that can be a stopgap or a good backup at some point. And, and then that means you have to knock it out of the park in the following class. So this is a very, very important position this year.
Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a it's a big deal, and and that's just, I think it's the timeline thing. Like, I, I I'm not trying to be dismissive of Blake Barnett, but how how it works, like he's just in a tough spot when you come in uh, for your true freshman year after a true freshman is now getting the keys immediately, and it's like he's not going to give this job up. So like there would have to be a waiting period, and that's where like just general timeline and situations in college football, the 2025 quarterback he would seem to be the next in line to be the guy depending on how things work out. So I think it'll be interesting to see where K-State goes. I also want to ask you this then, Matt Wells engaged on social media, the private jet picks, everything. Is he the dream dowling of the football staff? Yeah. yeah. I'm tar- I mean, they really don't have a, I mean, Taylor Pratt's probably that, right. When he can go out on and be on the road, but he doesn't get to always be on the road. So, I mean, there is not a big, tweeter or big social media guy on this entire staff really right yeah so Connor Riley was that at one point I he used to be a little bit more active than he was I'm trying to think nobody no he, he might be I mean Van Malone goes through spurts too I guess but um man no these guys just they don't I think they use social media to recruit in terms of like getting in kids direct messages right they're in the dms but they don't really like – they're not on Twitter or these other social media platforms to read what these kids are saying or to put out their own stuff, right? That's just – no one in this class or this coaching staff really does that. Yeah, that's uh, it's, it's just one of those things. Uh, last thing, you talk about Taylor Bratt getting on the road. Uh, sometimes he gets to do it whenever there's a coaching change or somebody's out of commission – should more K-State coaches step up and, you know, like, oh, well, I actually well, took a hammer to my hand and I, I'm I'm out for a little bit. Like, Brad's got to get on the road for us, you know. Should more guys be stepping up being team players? Yeah, right. Um, it wouldn't – now, I'll say this. It wouldn't surprise me moving forward if they do whatever they can to get Taylor Brad a waiver that same time frame every year because him being on the road is a big, big deal, especially when – you could have him drive and basically hit every school in the state of Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. Get, a, get around little road trip around the sunflower state. No, no, I don't think there's anybody else that would enjoy that more than him. So uh, you. he's probably a good guy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've been to a lot of towns in Kansas. And I'm like, uh, I don't know about this spot. Uh, so I, he's probably more uh, fit for it than I am. He's also oh, we, probably we, a better we, BS or about that stuff too. We joke about this, but like, you and I think it was a TJ Cleveland out of the oh yeah which station in Wichita see I don't want to get it CH, yeah <laughs> yeah so you and him can name about every mascot of every high school in the state of Kansas and it's really really impressive you guys both probably go ninety percent I wonder if Taylor Brack can kick your ass on that I bet he could I would uh, I I think if it was a if it was a three man competition between me Taylor and and TJ. I'm taking third in that. Like I pride my knowledge of of mascots across the state, but obviously, like Brad is in a different category of zone because of his knowledge and everything. But TJ has not only the benefit of now, like being the hey every Friday night I'm talking high school football for thirty minutes to an hour, and I'm covering like a large chunk of the state. He also has the edge of being like a small town guy in Kansas growing up. So like he's gonna have an edge on me that I don't like. I'm. I'm just a basic four. I don't know. You you might get him in Kansas City, though, and that might put you over the top. That that might help me. So, all right. Sometime, maybe this summer, maybe we'll have to put that to the test or something, uh, get get a little work in on the the mascots throughout the state when there's a little bit of a dead period because that's always a fun thing. And I'm sure everybody listening would love a shout-out of their their school or whatever. So uh, I'd I'd love to talk about, you know, the, the Pretty Prairie Bulldogs or something, but no time for that today. So that'll do it for Derek Young. I'm Mason Voth. Full recruiting coverage. If this wasn't enough for you, head over to kstateonline.com. And if you're not signed up, make sure you are because it's the best spot for you to get your scoops. Uh, when K-State does land a quarterback commit or is trending towards getting one, you're going to find out if you're on K-State Online. So head over there, get signed up, find us at On3. And uh, we'll be back with more K-State coverage here on the KSO YouTube tomorrow. Uh, with plenty of things going on for K-State basketball and football. So we're out of here. Thank you for watching K-State.